Good morning. It is now fall. It is 922 of 2012. It is at the end of the month of September with a monster stealth rally with, you know, some volatility along the ways in Apple computer. And we've already showed the video, but why is Google a stronger stock relative to NASDAQ 100 and NASDAQ composite? This does play a role. It's had a four month breakout parabolic as we had over here, this is a NASDAQ composite. See it? NASDAQ composite, parabolic four-month breakout. Over here, NASDAQ 100, that Apple has about a 16% weighting in this NASDAQ 100. That's this right here, NASDAQ 100 index. That is the 100 stocks that trade in the NASDAQ broader composite. Four-month rally up. Four month rally up. It's contributed to the rally. It's heavily, it's heavily weighted in the NASDAQ 100. What I will show is that during this rally, and we're going into a, a major earnings season, and the gadgets are out to sell. And what I'm going to say is, is that we're extremely overbought. And when people start to hit the exit on this thing, this thing will have a reversal. However, there's a bellwether called Google that would help give the broader bull market. So any dips from this overbought process, people will continue to buy this based on their sales and their new product and many other speculative things that are that are happening. And that Apple has led the NASDAQ composite to multi-year highs as I've shown here. Here's the NASDAQ composite. And we're right over here. Once again, I'll go right back over here to the 2000-2001 area where it all started 12 years ago and how the bear started in year 2000. But we've had some big bellwethers like Apple that has helped take this NASDAQ composite out of its bear territory into new bull territory from the year 2009 expansion as Apple was expanding so was the NASDAQ composite and so was the NASDAQ 100 and as I show the NASDAQ 100 I'll go right back over here this is the key this is the same expansion when Apple was expanding we have a new leader that has taken this 12 year bear it's been 12 years since it started over 12 years and we are about I will say between the bear and the bull cycle over a 12 year period we got more bull than bear and the bear the bear that started in the financial crisis here has worked that bear off now earnings are going to have a big role moving forward we're overbought in Apple we're overbought we're overbought People have not performed in the marketplace this calendar year. This is one of the most hated rallies in U.S. history as far as bull rallies go. Why is it? Because people don't believe what's going on in the world, and they've made it very confusing. But when we look at things mathematically, we can see that Apple expanded and so did everything else. But when this name has a reversal and there's going to be price volatility, we are reaching the top. Yes, we can still trade up higher, but each high will be met with an intraday reversal. Price volatility, both downside volatility that it had here. Remember when we shorted up here at the first high, right at 644, all the way down here was 100, almost $100. But look, there will be times in this cycle because we're going into fall and we're going to go into year end is, is that we're overbought. So when we have pullbacks, the people that did not buy Apple will be looking at buying the dips in this bull rally and we'll use it to monitor and gauge everything over here because it was Apple, it was Google, but it was Apple that played a big role of what new technologies and new gadgets and new things have brought this way back over here back when I was shorting these things over here back in these calendar years look at this we're right here there's gonna be headwinds but it doesn't matter this market is not in the bear territory that it was does it mean that the market could never return there does it mean that all of this could go south sure we're not here to debate that this is a bull run 
and bull runs are overbought and they're going to pull back. And the people that did not perform in the market, the market sentiment is going to change. And those people are going to want to get in the market. Why? Because Mr. Bernanke told you, if you don't, you will buy stocks. And that QE3 and Google and Apple has gotten us back to where we could finally say that the bull is fully, not fully in control. But we can say that the bull waiting has got at least 70%, 75% and higher control since that 2000 bear, year 2000 bear, got into this NASDAQ composite. And I can tell you that it's at the major wall of resistances and that the financial crises that happened where Apple sold down in volatility, just like the indexes, They've all performed well. NASDAQ 100 is right here. And it's very important to understand the weighting of this NASDAQ 100 and this Apple trade is that Apple is overbought on this monthly chart where high frequency computing algorithms can change directional price movements and, and have downside volatility. Okay? But people remain on the sideline will continue to buy this name just as they did over here in this calendar year. We had that big short. Hey, it was time to be long and you got a four month rally. So that's the Apple history. Once again, the NASDAQ 100, we are breaking major bear trends from the 2009 highs up here to the area and I'm going to show my MMTs this is the major area where this part of the trend from the bottom here to the 2000 reversal and the 2007 reversal where this is is that the bull has much more of a greater weighting than the bear in the broader broader NASDAQ 100 composite the same rule will follow here in the NASDAQ composite, NASDAQ 100, they're both the same. That's only 100 stocks, and this is all of the stocks. But you can see that the bull is in charge right now. And I'm going to show people that the NASDAQ composite isn't as overbought as Apple. It's at 87.45. You don't believe me? This is at 92.43 on Apple monthly. It's much more overbought and one of the more overbought areas than we've seen Apple before on a monthly chart. Now, as far as your NASDAQ 100 goes, we can clearly see that this is 89.37%. And it's a standard technical indicator that the general public uses. We use a different system. However, the high frequency program algorithmatic algorithms will change and create more price volatility at these overbought levels as we move forward into this calendar year. And the major obstacle for both the NASDAQ composite and the NASDAQ 100 is going to be the calendar earnings. Remember, you got worldwide stimuluses. You got people that are going to want to play catch up to the market, but they're going to be buying the dips. Economically, everything is horrible, we know. And we have a major election, we know. Who cares? The thing of it is, is where this bull is and where the bull is overbought, but where people will buy the fade or the pullback in these bulls unless something dramatically changes. They have reached a three-month calendar 2012 breakout zone where their 12-year downtrend bear trend is being broke in the cycle. It's not up at the highs. It doesn't have to be. What has to be is the following, is that when you take the high, you take the low, and you take where this expansion, this is a three, going on three years, you see. So this three-year expansion, that's 36 months of stimulus is and everything working here. And you got everything else working, but they all seem to do it finally in a four-month period with the three month breakout. And mathematically, the distances from here to here, from, from that high to there, and this up here, when we equate them out, we're saying that the bull has the upper hand and that there is more of a bull trend than the longer 12 year downtrend in, in all of these things. And we just wanna update everyone though, that you're extremely overbought, 
There's going to be a lot of earnings price volatility. You've got countries around the world. You have like 30 countries hating the U.S. You've got people protesting everywhere. You've got Europe doing massive stimuluses right now. Everybody is printing money, and that can continue to try to move markets higher. But Europe's slow growth hasn't changed yet. Monetary policy, stimuluses are one thing. Growth is going to be another. It's going to take a couple of quarters to turn that Europe around. But what markets are looking at is even though that growth is contracted to this current level, is what does forward growth look like and how does the European stimulus kick in? One of the things that I'm going to talk about very quickly in the NASDAQ composite and the NASDAQ 100 and the calendar earnings is there's a lot of major headwinds and if we have an Iran Israel deal well the bull would pull back it would give everyone an opportunity that missed the first beginning new bull trend that is on the record with us because that's what it is the bear doesn't have the control it had it did have a lot of control and it had every reason to have control and it still has reason to have control now. But the truth of the realities are is this is where we're at in the major NASDAQ composite monthly and NASDAQ 100 here. And I am proud to say that I would love to see this 12 year downtrend get broke. And I would love to see where people could go back to work. And it would be nice to have the right president doing the right decisions for us. Both of those guys out there running for president, Obama's getting trying to get reelected. The other guy's trying to say he's not doing the right thing. They're going to go head to toe at it. And the thing about it is, what do the American people get? And what do American people get out of investment? What do American people get out of trade management? People that want to be involved in markets on an interday level and get back in there like they used to look at you have the chance if the earnings aren't going to change right away there's going to be some headwind there the transports have showed it but this is a bull and what i will tell you mathematically when the bull pulls back buy the dip because each company that reports the quarterly earnings, and I'm going to go through these earnings with people, and I'm going to tell you that earnings season right here starts on Monday, October 8, 2012. We're going into an overbought NASDAQ composite, NASDAQ 100, overbought Google, overbought Apple. We're running at all-time highs in the first calendar week. We got Google. Google never normally reports in the first week, so this date on October 11th could change. But we can see that Alcoa will start it out. Yum Brands is in there. Costco is in here. All of the leaders that start the calendar earnings out are going to play a role. Then the second week as we move forward in October is that we're going into a major earnings season and all of these companies are going to be reporting. CEOs around the world are very bearish. Growth isn't there. They don't know what's going to happen with taxes. you got high food inflation, but you have massive stimuluses that are being deployed in the banking system worldwide and Ben Bernanke went way beyond we're gonna see what IBM has to say but what we will say is that the earnings didn't change right away the stimuluses did but the earnings growth well that takes time so the good leaders that have to guide down and miss a lot of them the last quarter wasn't a good quarter and it's possible at the current level until Europe changes around that we could go into slightly negative earnings growth into 2013 it is possible but that bull trend is in there and people listen to me the people that aren't involved in the rally the big fund managers head fund managers mutual fund managers they got to come in here and do their job and they got to put money to work because of the massive stimuluses that Ben Bernanke has created, there will not be an imbalance in inflation until Jan or it would be June of 2013. We would start to get to a level where that would start to peak at much higher levels. That's something the Fed will have to deal with down at that point in time. But we're saying that the bull is in play. The earnings cycle isn't going to be exactly what everyone thinks it's going to be. The transports have showed it. The, the, the weakening in the growth is there. The, the lack of people going back to work is there. We haven't had Congress do anything. We haven't had anything happen. It doesn't matter. What I am saying to my people 
is that we're at the wall of resistances. We're going to have pullbacks from overbought levels in NASDAQ composite. Google and Apple will be the primary leaders. Um, everything is priced to perfection for the quarterly earnings. We will take each case by case. We will take each leadership in each sector in Dicey case by case. Where their bull trends have gone, but just remember that Mario says that a lot of companies guided down last quarter, in the last quarter of that earnings, where they started falling short. And Chinese have got the lowest growth ever. And Ben Bernanke is trying to tell people, listen, you're not going to, you want to get a class, you want to get a good yield, then you're going to get in the equity market, basically. And other asset allocations and asset models do not yield as much as equities. And that's a, going to be a big support level. He basically gave a three year checkbook open, as far as I'm concerned, in QE3. That's going to mean that fund managers on the side, when these earnings come out and they don't live up to them, their earnings are not going to change. Stimuluses, yes. They go into effect right away. But these earnings cycles, depending on what the consumer growth is and where the consumer is here in the U.S. and where the consumer is in Europe and where other consumers in other parts of the world buying behaviors are relative to U.S. equity, meaning that our broader equity market, our publicly traded companies, got to hit a lower level in the earnings trough. They've got to get all of that written down. They've got to bring everything in the line. People are not hiring more people yet. There's still a lot of uncertainty out there. Growth has not changed overnight. The stocks that are extended going into the earnings that will come down like Bed Bath & Beyond the other day and lots of stocks that have shown in the transport such as FedEx, such as some of the rails and some of the other big leaders there have come out and things have not changed. We've looked in the shipping area, we've looked in the trucking area, we've looked in the FedEx area, the UPS area, and the rail area on transportation of goods and services and manufacturing has not yet and is a long ways from ever getting back. However, it's how these companies position themselves. We're overbought. And I can tell you right now, that the bull is overbought, but when the bull pulls back and these earnings pull back, the bull will rush in because we've created enough QE3 to change people's opinions and views. However, the markets have a major, major battle called worldwide terrorism. We also know that within the financial banking system that when these worldwide leaders in each country that is doing all this massive stimulus injections when they start to argue with each other and there will be conflict around the world we have seen the world riot in two days to escalation levels of hating US people and US companies already listen there is a lot of headwinds to be worried about. But what it says technically outside of the fundamentals is that we have a full bull in, in play. And what we will be telling people going through the calendar year and into 2013, all of this analysis will change based on where the weighting of the bull is and how they respond to the earnings. We are overbought. We will caution our big players who watch the video. They'll be on our site. This is for you and for the hedge fund manager community, you know that you've underperformed and people will play catch up. That's a good support level for the bull because moving forward, unless there's a major war with Iran and Israel can put a dent in this short term. But remember, dips will be bought. The bull is in charge, even though in the face of lower growth, lower earnings are going to be around the corner. There's going to be a major problem there. But dips will be bought there. So when they come down in this coming quarter, 
People are still going to believe with the Fed behind them and the short-term banking system around the world putting that massive stimulus is in there. We can continue to go higher in the NASDAQ composite and this rally could keep going. And it will. But I will tell people there will be a pullback from the summer rally of calendar 2012 in these names, in this in NASDAQ composite, NASDAQ 100. Once again, here is the Apple. It is the most overbought. It's uh, Google is more overbought than Apple. However, overbought bulls have to have pullbacks. And there'll have to be some headlines. And there'll have to be some earnings volatility. And there'll have to be some worldwide events that occur. People are not convinced that Europe, that their payroll society and work society is going to return anytime soon. That that's going to be a very long drawn out process as it probably will. But this is a major update in fall. Today is the very first day. And it's very important to let people know what the calendar 2004 big time breakouts in Google, Apple, and all the indexes are at their peak levels. Buy the dips, sell the rips, be very cautionary. And once again, we always like to talk about these things about two to three weeks before they report the earnings. And we like to look and see where these bull runs have gone over multi-year periods. That's why we're looking at this. And w what were the new stocks that gave the old stocks that took this down over here? But what is the new breed? And where does that new breed take us when fundamentals do turn around? If the economy was to get better and Congress did the right thing and fiscal policies were changing and the way that deficits and the way that Medicare, the way that Social Security, the way that everything out here does not make sense. I don't believe that the government's done what they should be doing. And I don't believe that they provided enough for the people. Wall Street's a different thing. And this tape is a different thing. But growth and individuals and elections that are coming, that's all to be seen. People are still very pessimistic about it. Let us not be fooled about that. But when it comes to engaging in markets, we're here to make markets. And we're here to take which way the movement goes. And we're here to bank those profits. But we're also here to let the innocent people know that there is some headwinds. And that the earnings cycle has not changed. It doesn't change in one day or one month or three months. No. So it's going to be a very interesting fall earnings that start. And the people that have not performed in the market will buy the dips and sell the rips. And this is a major calendar year update going into fall. The video is long. We do it this way because I've got to say what I have to say to the right people around the world. And those people are good friends of mine for many years. And new people that come to us is, is that we try to give you a fair and balanced approach and a good message as to what you should be looking forward to, what you should be on cautionary alert about, and where the world is. Thank you.